imagine that you're passing a fast food restaurant and you smell hamburger on the grill. You're hungry, so you decide to pull in, order a beef burger and wait for it. Imagine now that you're holding your beef burger in your hands. Would you be able to recognize if it's actually a 100% beef burger as claimed? Well, probably not. Basically, this is an atypical classification problem known as one-class classification or novelty detection, whose solution is not trivial. In fact, while you are supposed to know the color, the shape, the smell, the flavor, or scientifically speaking, the chemical composition of a true beef burger, the ways it might be contaminated are countless and mostly unpredictable. The beef burger is just an example of a complex system which aims to imitate or hide flaws in order to produce illegal gains. Specifically, the fraud phenomenon is very risky and produces several implications both for the community budget and health and food safety. Try now to change scenario and suppose that you are an art curator who has been asked to evaluate a painting in terms of its state of preservation and to give an advice on ways to restore the work or maintain it in good conditions. Well, uh, uh, the decision on which materials are more suitable for the conservation or restoration procedures should be based on the chemical composition of the painting. Depending both on the historic period the artwork dates back and the painting technique that was adopted, the various ingredients such as glues, varnishes or pigment are supposed to be known. However, the painting could have been altered in many different ways. Thus, by its nature, this is again a one-class classification problem. In my PhD thesis, I introduced a new method for one-class classification whose aim is to learn a boundary between the real and the fake using a typicality measure. Basically, such a boundary is identified so as to balance the risk of classifying a real object as a fake and vice versa. Since usually one-class classification problems involve high-dimensional data sets, preliminary dimension reduction techniques are needed to be implemented. Thus concluding, results of applying such a method to both the scenarios descri described before demonstrate that the class separation which result is quite perfect. Thank you.